There are certain books that are so deep and rich. Every time I read them, I discover something new. Rise of the Robots, Technology and the Threat of a Jobless Future by Martin Ford is one of them. This book, which was released in 2015, analyzes the impact that AI will have on the labor market, like retail, healthcare, education, IT, consumerism, etc. He believes that there will be a social and economic disruption because of AI and machine learning. In this video, I'm going to discuss five ideas from the book in the context of architecture and construction. The first is the American Goldilocks period. There was a perfect symbiosis between rapid technological progress and the welfare of the American workforce from 1945 after World War II to 1970. Machines were widely used to improve the productivity of workers, which increased profits and made humans more valuable, allowing them to demand higher wages. However, after the 70s, machines proved to be better workers than humans. Instead of increasing human productivity and working with them, machines turned into workers themselves. While the shift to automation is visible in the automotive and agriculture fields, it's not as evident in architecture and construction. There are hints of it, of course. For example, architecture offices in the 70s were filled with men hunched over desks, sketching all day long. Nowadays, programs like AutoCAD and Revit have simplified the drawing process. A single person can do the work of 10 to 15 people. In the construction field, machines and robots weld MEP parts, manufacture fittings, etc. But humans still assemble all these parts together on site. Prefabrication is a niche market, usually limited to residential construction. The second is factory reshoring. Outsourcing or offshoring is the act of moving work and jobs to another country for numerous reasons, one of them being cheaper labor. This loss of jobs in the States was evident from the 1970s to the early 2000s. However, we are now seeing companies bringing manufacturing and services back to the States from overseas, which is called factory reshoring. Wages are rising in Asia, and the solution that big corporations have come to is to just engineer humans out of the product. Robots can perform all the same tasks that humans can, but they can perform them faster, cheaper, and better. Factory reshoring also decreases transportation costs and brings manufacturing closer to consumers. For example, Caterpillar, which produces construction and farm equipment, announced reshoring projects in Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, and Texas. The hydraulic excavators that they build weigh up to 49 tons and are expensive to ship. So it made sense to open a factory in Texas for $200 million. But this massive factory is expected to generate just 800 jobs because so much of the work is automated. The third is that all jobs are in jeopardy. Whenever robots enter a particular industry and make humans dispensable, humans have to move to another field. In the 1850s, 50% of all US workers were employed on farms, but by 2000, less than 2% were. Thousands of people who worked in the agriculture field had to move to the city. Similarly, we see so many adults working in the service industry, like restaurants, when those jobs used to be part-time positions for teenagers. These adults don't have any other alternatives. They have been engineered out of blue-collar jobs. Martin Ford believes that robots and automation are now a threat to college-educated, white-collar workers too. Dusty Robotics is a California-based startup that builds mobile robots. These print layout plans directly onto the flows of job sites using BIM models as a guide. This robot can eliminate human errors on projects, reduce the number of workers needed, and reduce construction times. The fourth is the big data phenomenon. Big data is the 21st century phenomenon of accumulating large volumes of structured and unstructured data every single day. Data is constantly being collected by gadgets all around us, like phones, thermostats, refrigerators, home assistant devices, internet providers, water and utility supplies, etc. This data makes our lives more convenient and it makes companies more personable. Instant gratification from product purchases is our daily dopamine and serotonin release. Just like Tesla cars that learn from each other and are updated overnight, 
Buildings will soon do the same. Clients are going to demand constant monitoring of air and water quality, energy usage, etc. Building systems are going to be software driven so they can be updated to perform more efficiently. The fifth is the perfect storm. Martin Ford talks about this concept as the worst possible outcome that we could be heading towards, a situation where extreme unemployment caused by technology collides with adverse societal and environmental changes like an aging population, climate change and resource depletion. These could occur at the same time and amplify each other, leading to a perfect storm that would be disastrous for mankind. So what's the solution? Well, Martin Ford is an advocate for universal basic income. Since automation and loss of jobs are inevitable, a stipend would help maintain social security and provide a decent standard of living. It would also ensure that consumers have money to spend. I was a proponent for a universal basic income until I saw what idleness does to humans in 2020. I think we have a psychological need to be doing stuff, to be active. We're being numbed by Netflix binging right now, but that trend is bound to break eventually. The problem with holding back on automation and progress just to keep people employed and busy is that we lose our competitive advantage. Other companies and countries may not want to make that sacrifice and they will be more powerful. We're never going to have a unanimous decision among all companies and countries to slow down automation for the sake of jobs. But if we are engineered out of manufacturing, we lose our disposable income and we can't buy the stuff that robots create. It's a lose-lose situation, but it's just another interesting challenge for mankind. I didn't propose the solution in this video because I don't know what it is and I don't think there is a right solution. We just have to try different things, fail a couple of times until we find some sort of middle ground and balance. Let me know what you think about the effect of automation and AI in the comments below. I started a Patreon account to help me make these videos because I can't rely just on Google ads. A big thank you to the generous patrons who are already supporting me. If you can contribute, I'll provide a link in the description. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.